Hi everyone, this is the second video on the empirical gas laws or the simple gas laws. In the first video we talked about Boyle's law, of course, which has this form, P times V equals a constant. In this video we're going to start by talking about Charles law. And what Charles discovered is he discovered a direct proportionality between volume and temperature. So what you remember is in Boyle's Law we talk about the inverse proportionality between pressure and volume where when pressure goes up volume has to go down in order for the product to be always the same value or a constant. For Schultz what he found was he found that when volume and temperature uh, are measured together when temperature goes up volume also goes up. That's what we call direct proportionality and you should be able to hopefully differentiate this from inverse proportionality which is what Boyle uh, observed between pressure and volume relationship. So another way to write this mathematically is V over T is constant and of course in the um, same way that we express Boyle's law in various conditions we can also express Schall's law in different conditions because all of these ratios will end up being equal to the same number which is this constant and of course that depends on the con the experimental condition so v1 over t1 is equal to v2 over t2 and so on one thing I want to again point out is that in all of these simple, lo simple laws there's usually certain properties that you have to hold constant during the experiment in order for you to be able to see this relationship or this law and in this case the pressure has to be held constant as well as the amount of gas or a number of moles of gas throughout the experiment. So Schultz is a, is a unique scientist because he was a balloon enthusiast. He really wanted to experiment with, with air travel. He was uh, alive around the uh, 18th century or so, so he was kind of interested to try to figure out if there's a way to uh, use a balloon to travel. And he was the first person to use hydrogen gas, fill up a balloon, and actually travel with it. Here's um, Charles uh, illustrated here, and here's his uh, travel in a balloon with a, a friend. And it was actually the first time that anybody actually traveled a balloon that when he came down, um, and the balloon landed at, at a you know uh, remote vill village outside uh, Paris. Everybody was sort of shocked by by this big object that was coming down from the sky. That you know all the villagers basically just attacked the balloon uh, and kind of tore it down to shreds. So that was kind of in an interesting anecdote about Charles. But he basically discovered that in order to keep that volume of the balloon a certain way, you have to also keep the temperature proportionally um, with the volume of the balloon. Now what's interesting about Charles, uh, the Charles relationship is the following. You notice in this case these are actually data um, that are you can see here we're plotting on the y-axis volume and on the x-axis temperature. It turns out that if you were to do this experiment where you just change temperature and you try to measure the volume to see what happens to the volume, right? You notice that as you uh, change the temperature down, and you can do this at various pressures, so I, it might be a little hard for you to see, but here's the red uh, symbols is when the experiment was done at pressure equals half an atmosphere. Uh, the triangle here is for when pressure equals one atmosphere, and then the blue symbol is when pressure is two atmospheres. You can see that you have this linear relationship between volume and temperature, okay, which is what Charles observed. Of course, there's there's a there's a change as vol as temperature goes up. You know, this way volume also goes up, right? So you have this linear relationship. But what's unique about this is that it doesn't matter which pressure you do this experiment at. If you were to extrapolate these lines all the way to volume um, equals zero. What you find is the temperature always intersects, regardless of which pressure you did this experiment at. The temperature always intersects at the same point, and that value is negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. Okay? So here I added this little uh, bit on the 
on that uh, point that I just mentioned, which is that this this um, uh, plot all tend to intersect at negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. And it wasn't until, uh, you know, a few years later that a, a scientist named Lord Kelvin realized that the reason for this is because that must be the lowest temperature that, uh, you know, any substance can go to. So then he reset this to be the lowest temperature possible, okay, and lordy, that would be not the right thing to type in there. It would be lowest temperature possible, and that, of course, is what we now know as uh, zero Kelvin because he was the first person to actually figure this out. So um, that's how, you know the importance actually of Charles's discovery. One of the importance is the ability to then realize that there's the lowest temperature possible, which is now is given as this uh, scale called the Kelvin scale. Okay. Now, um, a person whose work kind of parallels Charles is, is a friend of his, which was uh, named Gay Lussac, Joseph Gay Lussac, and what he discovered was, you know, again fairly similar to in, in terms of uh, properties is what Charles discovered. He discovered direct proportionality in this case between pressure and temperature. So he found basically that pressure over temperature is constant. In other words, when you increase temperature of a gas, the pressure also increases. Now again, this assumes a certain uh, experimental condition, which in this case means the volume and the amount of gas have to be kept constant throughout the experiment. So for example, let's say you have um, <clears throat> a fixed container, like a box or something, and you put a gas inside, and if you put a Bunsen burner, for example, inside the underneath the box, then the gases inside would get warmer and warmer, temperature will go up. And if you have a, a, a way to measure the pressure of the gas inside that box, you'll find that the pressure also goes up proportionally as the temperature goes up. Now, temperature here has to be expressed in degrees Kelvin for the reason that I just mentioned, that the, the Kelvin scale is what the um, absolute scale is. So if you want both of these quantities to be positive, uh, the temperature have to be expressed in degrees Kelvin. Okay. So similar to you know Boyle's and Charles's relationship, if you uh, you can express Gay-Lussac's relationship in various conditions, so P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, and so on. Again, assuming in this case that the volume and the amount of gas are held constant throughout the experiment. Uh, Gay Lussac, as I said, was a contemporary of Charles. They actually, um, you know, shared work together, and he was again another enthusiast of air travel. And he was the first person to go up all the way to 23,000 uh, feet, or about 7,000 meters, on a balloon, and almost uh, froze to to death because nobody ever went up that high. And of course, temperature got lower and lower as you go uh, higher, higher in the atmosphere. Okay, so. Uh, here's Gay Lussac shown on the picture. Um, I want to kind of close off this video uh, by working through this example. This is uh, an example where it says you have a gas at 25 degrees Celsius, the volume is 2 liters. What is the volume of the gas when you increase the temperature to 100 degrees Celsius if pressure remains constant? Okay, so if you the way you want to do a lot of gas problems, you kind of start with all the variables that you know because usually you have to kind of plug it into one of these gas laws. So the volume um, uh, initially is uh, 2 liters so you can indicate that as your first um, volume V1 2 liters right here and then the temperature 1 for example is uh, in this case 25 degrees Celsius temperature 2 is given as 100 degrees Celsius and then volume 2 is what we're being asked. Now the key here is to realize that with gases and with Charles law, uh, of course we just talked about it, is the temperature always has to be expressed in Kelvin because that's the reason, because there's a linear relationship when you have the, um, you, you're not going to get a negative number, you have to have a positive number in your relationship. So in this case, this temperature has to express in terms of uh, Kelvin, so then it's just 20 5 plus 273, we'll just use that as our uh, Kelvin conversion, and then you get 298 Kelvin. So then the temperature 2 here is going to be 100 plus 273, which is just 373 Kelvin. 
and then that allows you to then use your Charles law relationship which is v1 over t1 equals v2 over t2 and then you want to solve for v2 which is just going to be v1 over t1 times v t, uh, t2 I'm sorry t2 and then you just um, plug in your number so 2 liters over um, 298 Kelvin times temperature 2 which is 300 73 Kelvin and you notice that these cancel out and then you get a number here which corresponds to your answer so that answer is about 2.5 uh, O liter of uh, volume 2 again one thing you want to notice you want to make sure temperature is expressed in Kelvin because if you don't express it in Kelvin if you go below 273 then you're going to get a negative temperature and of course you have a negative value in one of the temperature values and the other one is positive for example then you're gonna get a volume that's negative and that makes no sense you can't have a negative volume what's that mean physically uh, it doesn't make sense you know if you have some kind of sample of matter the volume has to be a positive number so that's why we always have to express the uh, calculation temperature in degrees Kelvin which will always be positive because the lowest temperature possible is zero Kelvin you can't go negative Kelvin okay